Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Pometer. Thank you so much for logging on and tuning in, clicking links, however you got here. We're glad you're here. One more thing. Hit subscribe, smash the bell, come back over and over again. See, we've got amazing authors, artists, filmmakers, musicians, creative minds of all kinds. We are at the O'Galley Artworks Art Festival this weekend. We're hanging out. We are right now hanging out with author Karen Whiting. Karen, how are you? It's good to see you again. Good to see you, How have you been? Good, busy, but good. That's good. We know you've been <laughs> doing some traveling. Yes, I had some TV interviews, spoke up in Tennessee. I was at a filmmaker's conference, basically. Wow, that, fantastic. Yes, and... And so we have with us today 52 weekly devotions, um, and this is for families who are uh, families of service members. Is that correct? Well, or uh, they're one of the audience. Uh -huh. uh, it's for firefighters, law enforcement, uh, volunteers, EMTs, anyone who serves other people. That is fantastic. It really is. So um, tell us a little bit about uh, what inspired you to put this together. Probably my life. <laughs> Growing up life as Life is the, inspirational. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> Growing up as the granddaughter of the fire chief of my hometown, who went from being the head of the water brigade <laughs> to starting <Wow>. a fire company. <laughs> wow. A mother who was a nurse and had to, when she wasn't working as a nurse, she was often filling in and helping people recovering from some sort of disaster type thing. Uh, and then going through disasters like Hurricane Andrew, being married to someone in the Coast Guard for, who was and active duty 22 during, years. Uh, no, yes, there's domestic disasters. Uh, I don't know if people quite realize that, well, we love to pick on our Coast Guard buddies, but <laughs> they are the guys that wartime, peacetime, anytime, they're working every day. Mm -hmm. uh, rescue operations always go, and during a time of domestic disasters, they are the busiest guys in the yes. service. Yes, they and the National Guard who can be yeah. called in too. Mm -hmm. They're very, very busy. So what happens since it's for families called to serve, it's for a family who's either served by those people or those families who have a family member serving are what the stories are about. Any family can benefit because they can find out what it's like to be in that family and what those people do to respect them and care for them. But as usual, I always have that creative component. There's hands-on activities to do. There's Absolutely. a lot of fun components for children and the families as they're learning about this area. Our little guy area. has been enjoying this. Uh, <laughs> uh, our daughter deployed uh, a few months ago and he's been enjoying uh, looking through some of the activities and things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And it is a conversation starter, yes. which is, you know, we, we talked a little bit about this with some of our earlier authors today. One of the points, I think, of literature of any kind, but certainly literature aimed at families and children, is to spark conversation, to be a centerpiece so that you have a reason to talk about what it means to serve. And, and exactly. families today, and, and uh, we're very fond of saying that service in any component, emergency responder service, service in the military, it's a, it becomes a family tradition. It's an heirloom almost that we pass on. And um, it's, it's important that we share those stories so that we can show the community you know, right. why those things get passed down. Yes. You know? um, it, 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 I'll tell you what, and I know this from my, myself, from my own children, if you grow up as a, in a family in service, the, the last thing you want to do is service when you're young. And then you grow up and, and then <laughs> there's something about it that speaks to you and calls you to do it. And, yes. you know, my children grew up, you know, with an old army dad. And they, I'm sure they thought, hey, uh, <laughs> that is the last thing I want to do. Uh, and there they go. Right. It just, it yes. is there's something that calls to you when you know mm -hmm. what it's all about and this is a very important yes. teaching tool for families right when they understand the stories of how they've saved lives or how somebody sometimes when they don't get to save a life because it was too late by the time they were called how the compassion that person feels touches hearts as well as a child there's a story in there of a child calling 911 for their dad and all through the call they're holding on to that child to talk to him they get there with an extra person just to take care of that child while they're taking care of the dad who's having a heart attack and this type of thing so you start seeing what's happening and how these people really impact lives and all of a sudden you grow up and you realize I want to make a difference I want to impact lives 
or you have a story of a child because their family started getting day-old bread and giving it out to people and then expanded to all of a sudden having three churches taking the bread they collect to give it out but this one girl when she comes in and says oh there's tomato basil bread can I bring that to the neighbor down the street it was an old man that she knew his favorite it wasn't just collecting and giving but relationships were built and that made a difference and wow. so they care about that and when you start seeing that you realize what you do develops relationships it impacts lives and you can do it starting at any age because there's a lot of little things there to just help a neighbor just help somebody in your own family well and I think it's important to remember that you know when we talk about people who are called to serve um, we often you know we leave we cut sentences off in the middle and it is about community and you don't build community just by doing you build mm -hmm. community through those relationships it's about human interactions Right. And sometimes th that's the, the easiest and, and most effective way to serve is by having those relationships. Mm -hmm. Like you said, um, helping a senior in the neighborhood. Uh, you know, we don't know what people are going through in their lives. Right. And, you know, uh, I, I know uh, sometimes in our community we have some uh, uh, seniors that live down the way. Sometimes all they want is somebody to hang out with for a half hour. Mm -hmm. Just right. talk. They don't need anything. They yes. don't need you to clean the eaves. <laughs> they don't need you to mow the lawn. They just want to have tea. Mm -hmm. Right, and, exactly. And, They're know, lonely. And they that's, want you know, people long for community. Yes, and, they do. And, uh, and a life of service is about providing that and demonstrating mm -hmm. that every day. And what you've done here is absolutely amazing. So you've been doing interviews, you've been traveling around. Tell us about your travels. It's been a while since we had, we've had you in the chair. It has been. So, and I, you know, I, don't, I think you had me before I went to China even. Yes, I think so. Okay. Well, I was flown over to China with three other people to do an imagination tour. Doesn't that an sound like fun? An imagination tour? Yes. I love that. <laughs> I'm there. I'll, I'll volunteer for that. That's fantastic. What, what, tell us, Imagination Tour, what is this? Yes, it was to inspire creativity in the children and to help teachers and uh, camp educators and camp, you know, where we have summer camps and different camp programs for kids. It's brand new over in China. Mm. So it was how do they do that? How do they get a theme and continue with it? How do they get the kids to be creative when they're there? A lot of them are in school all day and it's all rote memory work to pass exams, to get into schools, to get into colleges, and they're losing some of their creative crafts. I was watching here, there's somebody who's doing, uh, Chinese, who's doing the cut work that they do. A lot of them are losing those type of crafts over there. We've had that happen here. Yeah, it is. I think uh -huh. when a society transitions, education serves varying purposes. And as education shifts and becomes more about finding a job, workforce mm -hmm. development, a lot of times the focus and emphasis shifts away from our creative nature. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I think it, it, it is antithetical to our nature as people because mm -hmm. we all, you know, so many people we talk to as authors, some of our peers in there, they had other lives. They were engineers and they were doctors and they were lawyers and they were, they were all these other things. But one day that creative mind woke up and they, they had to write. Yes. Um, so many of the people here at the festival this weekend, we've talked to painters that took time, we, uh, one uh, woman that came and sat in the chair yesterday, she took a lifetime off. She was an engineer at NASA and then a teacher <laughs> for ah. two careers. Yes. And then one day her husband said, you know, you've, you've always mentioned painting. She became a painter. She's been a full-time mm -hmm. painter now for the last several years. Right. That it's in there. Yes. And it's important that we nurture that. But people sometimes think they're not creative. And with children, we started with something very simple. We gave them chenille stems, you know, the pipe cleaners, yeah. just colored ones, and said, bend them, shape them, form them into something, connect with others if you want to. And they were making all sorts of things. Then we pause. And I talk a little bit more. Of course, there's somebody interpreting my words, saying, now you're having a lot of fun, and I love what you're making. I don't speak Chinese. I'd like to learn some words. Can you make a shape that you can teach me that word? And wow. they thought that was so great. And they had roses, bicycles, all sorts of things they were making wow. and teaching me to say a word in Chinese. So they were helping me while I was helping them. Wow. And How cool is that? And that develops a relationship with people. They think I'm doing something, but I'm also having fun doing it. And then we went into puppetry and dioramas and all sorts of things we could do with them with little expense of the supplies to make it mm -hmm. and just and yet lots of imagination and seeing how they just took a simple thing and made all sorts of things the from imagination it. tour yes That's fantastic <laughs> it really is and it's so wonderful to see um 
the, we are the product, being able to be here with you is the product of the world's shrinking. Mm -hmm. It's become truly a global community through online interactions, through social media, through, uh, and most importantly, and I will, through creativity. Mm -hmm. Because we share our, yes. because of this wonderful internet, this, this world wide web, we share our books, we share our art, we share our television and our radio with a global audience now in a way that we have never been able to do it before in human history. Right. And to get over to see another culture <laughs> yes. and to share your creativity with those children. Right, right. And um, then the people who flew us over had us into their home to make, um, uh, what is it, the dumplings with them. Wow. And they don't just make dumplings. They have a whole party and traditions that they taught us with dumplings. Wow. And they put certain things that have like a pit in it, an I olive with a pit. I smell a book coming. <laughs> I do. Uh, I really do. I had the coolest uh, fruit bread yesterday. Just, uh, I know there's a book coming. She, she learned how to make dumplings the Chinese way. Yeah, so That's pretty awesome. just fun types of things that you get to mix with the culture because they brought me over there and do other things with them. So that was one of the trips. And this past week I was with uh, Christians who do the Hollywood films for of Christian yes, films yes. like Overcomer and things that have just come yes, out. And so people said, oh, pitch something to them. And I thought, what have I got to pitch? Well, I pitched something that I have 120 stories of that will be a book at some point. And I had an animator interested. And I had somebody who wants to maybe do it with puppets. And we'll see, because these little seeds can take eight years to come to fruition oh, yes. or more. They can take yes. a long time. If you talk to a filmmaker, it's not an overnight process. No, no, I've learned something, that Hollywood clocks <laughs> run really slow. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Love you guys, yeah. but really, the rest of us get up in the morning and get going. You guys get up in the morning and you're like, eh, we'll get going later. Yeah, right. Uh, it does take a very long well, time to get that, but you're but you were able to have those meetings? Yes, and they wanted my one sheets, which I gave them, and they asked me questions, and they liked my responses, and so that was all very good, and we'll see, but it could be a very long time. Don't ask me next week or next year, how's it going, because I probably will not know. They take that one sheet, and you may not get it, hear back from them for two to three years even. So you don't know what's happening in the background yeah, unless the they meetings, come to get an yeah. option for your story or whatever it is that you're pitching with them. Mm -hmm. I also talk to people doing documentaries because of my history book and two people wanted to take that. One of them is doing a whole America, Americana documentary series. Wow. Now he may like to reference some of my stories or something on that but we talked about it to go with that series would he like me to do a devotional book because I have my nonfiction historic devotional book yes and he said oh that could be his missing element he's really interested but again awesome. he'll do the documentaries it could be two or three years before he's ready to come to me and say now let's work on let's the book. work on that yeah that is so. really really <laughs> what you are outside your mind that's my shut up card. I don't know why she's got it out because it doesn't feel like 10 minutes or 15 minutes, but okay, we'll do it, okay? Right, yeah. Thank you, Famous Faces and Funnies. Thank you, Space Coast Comics, Indie Originals. Thank you to Hearts Helping Others of Central Florida for all of your support at Krypton Radio. And thank you most of all, guys, Josh Bauer at J. Bauer Art for all the art that's on our set this weekend as we're at the O'Galley Artworks Art Festival. We've been hanging out with author Karen Whiting and... We're going to put links down below again so you can find her. You can find her devotional books. You can find all the things that she's into. And you can follow her unfolding adventures because we're pretty sure Hollywood's <laughs> calling. Huh? They're going to call. And so you follow that online when we send you over to Karen's pages, social media, etc. In the meantime, log on and tune in and see who we're hanging with next. We were just getting, thank you so much. Thank we were just you. getting going. Yeah. What's wrong with you?